let us uh, first uh, briefly review what we have studied so far in this part of the course which is on electronic instruments ok. So, recap. So, we have start uh, studied some background digital electronics So, here we have studied flip flops, then from flip flops we have designed counters, this is the most important things uh, thing we need from this. Then we have studied from analog electronics, op amps. And what have we studied there? We have studied uh, amplifiers, inverting, non inverting difference amplifiers, and Smith trigger. Okay, you can also say comparator, that is trivial. Now, after that, we have come started to combine the elements from digital electronics and uh, analog electronics to make nice measuring instruments. So, for example, we have taken counters you know counters from here and plus mid trigger this gave us what frequency meter digital frequency meter. Then when we took say counter plus comparator, uh, this gave us what digital voltmeter, which is also same as ADC you know. So, we have got some flavor of the electronic instruments, electronic instrumentations because we have studied these instruments. But probably I did uh, never tell you before uh, why do we need digital instruments at all because uh, with uh, classical electromechanical instruments we could measure almost anything voltage, current, uh, resistance, uh, power, energy everything. So, why do we need digital I mean not digital ok uh, electronic instruments. So, uh, the question why this is a very important question I should tell you why do we need electronic instruments active electronic instruments. Okay, just a word of caution, uh, people students often uh, make uh, has a mis uh, concept that electronic instruments mean digital instruments. No, electronic instruments can also be analog instruments with pointers, where pointers oscillates. Okay, so electronic instruments. can be either analog or digital. It is never that electronic instruments mean only digital instruments, no not at all ok. So, this is a common mistake that students have many people have that electronic instruments mean digital instruments, no not at all never, never ever ever do this mistake ok. Okay. So, the question is why do we need electronic instruments? So, uh, the answer we will see with some examples where uh, classical instruments um, fail I mean do not provide all the required uh, uh, I mean required things ok. 
let us take an example. Suppose uh, we want to uh, measure a voltage in a circuit, uh, which circuit is equivalent to this. It can be a complicated circuit, but maybe using Thevenin's law, we can reduce that circuit uh, to this. So, this is a voltage, so call it 1 volt and this is uh, this is VTH, Thevenin voltage and RTH is equal to 1 kilo ohm. The task is to measure the voltage between terminal A and B. To measure V A B. How do we measure? Now, we will take a voltmeter and we will connect it between this. Suppose, we have a electromechanical voltmeter, maybe PMMC based or something, electromechanical voltmeter. Uh, with properties like uh, internal with internal uh, impedance is equal to uh, 1 kilo ohm. So, this also has R m meter resistance equal to 1 kilo ohm. So, what will be the measured voltage? measured V A B will be how much when we connect this voltmeter, what will be the reading of this voltmeter? So, the reading will be not equal to 1 volt, it will be half volt, because as soon as you connect it, 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 it will draw some current, okay? some current will flow and therefore, this voltage will get uh, divided into this and this this is equal to 1 kilo ohm, this is equal to 1 kilo ohm. So, therefore, the voltage across this you know will be half kilo ohm. Okay, so, this will be 0 0.5 kilo ohm. So, error is how much? Error is 50 percent. The true voltage was you know true or uh, true V A B which is in the absence of Uh, in the ab I mean absence of uh, the meter was 1 volt. Uh, sorry, this is not ohm, this is volt. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so, true value was 1 volt and uh, measured value is half. So, we have a uh, error and why do we have this error? This error comes from the fact that the internal resistance of this circuit is comparable and equal in this case uh, to the internal resistance of the voltmeter. We ideally want the voltmeter resistance to be infinite or much much larger than the resistance of the circuit. So, this is not true in this case, therefore, we have an error. So, let me put a note. error comes because uh, the internal resistance of the voltmeter is not very high compared to the internal resistance of the uh, circuit being measured. Okay. So, this is the reason behind the error. So, therefore, we need, so this is of course, so we need very high internal resistance or you can call input resistance of the voltmeter. So, we need very high 
uh, input resistance of the voltmeter. Okay. So, this this is a important fact that we have uh, learned here. Now, um, the second uh, thing is okay, how can we increase the internal resistance? We can you know we can increase the internal resistance of a voltmeter by adding a resistance in series right. So, let us ask can we not increase uh, the, re the resistance of voltmeter by adding series resistance this is a simple trick we can use now but then we will have another problem okay uh, the problem is that we will have another problem okay suppose let's uh, go back to this example say so, this meter uh, had a range of uh, 0 to 1 volt 0 to 1 volt range okay now say we say we add 9 kilo ohm series resistance so definitely the total internal resistance then uh, total rm will be will be equal to 10 kilo ohm much greater than 1 kilo ohm which is the uh, Thevenin in resistance of the circuit. So, then this will give less uh, error as expected, but uh, now the range uh, of the meter will change. What will be the uh, new range so you see in the original meter this was 1 kilo ohm and we used to get full scale deflection if 1 volt is applied across these two points right but now we have a series resistance added 9 kilo ohm okay so 1 volt. So, for uh, for FSD for full scale deflection we need 1 volt here across this. Now, how much voltage do we need between these two terminals? For full scale deflection again we definitely will need the same amount of current to flow. Okay. So, previously uh, for full scale deflection the current that was flowing. So, F S D current uh, it was 1 volt divided by 1 kilo ohm this is 1 milli ampere. So, this will remain same. So, we need same 1 milli ampere current to flow okay. and now, so now new range will be 1 milli ampere okay. so uh, that should flow and that will ha we have to multiply with 10 kilo ohm. Okay. So, that will be the total voltage we have to apply across this. So, this will be 1 milli ampere multiplied by 
10 kilo ohm which is 10 volt. So, that means we have to apply 10 volt across this then only we will get 1 volt uh, sorry a full scale deflection uh, here. But now if we want to measure 1 volt okay, with this meter whose full scale deflection is now changed to uh, 10 volt if we apply 1 volt then the deflection will be only 10 percent right. So, new range is how much 10 volt 0 to 10 volt 0 to 10 volt. So, if we apply now if we apply 1 volt or if we want to measure one volt then deflection will be around 10 percent ok. So, the pointer will be only here this is 10 volt we are applying one volt ok. So, this is actually the new range and what is wrong uh, if the deflection is small if the deflection is small then we may make error in uh, recording the po uh, position of the pointer. We may make say slight error due to parallax error or something. So, we may think the act pointer is not here, but say actually it is uh, maybe slightly here or slightly here okay. and then uh, this will be the error say uh, th this is 0 0.1 volt. So, the relative error is therefore, becomes 0 0.1 out of 1 in this case 10 percent, but if the pointer was here if the pointer is giving me uh, full scale deflection then if I make same error same error. So, this gap is same as this gap ok if this is same as this gap but then the relative error percentage error will be small right. If I make same error in uh, noting the po uh, position of the pointer when the pointer is almost towards the right the percentage error will be less, but if the pointer is close to 0 if I make same error sm same small error percentage error will be large ok. So, then we will have large percentage error due to small mistake uh, say in uh, recording pointer position. So, what have we learnt? We have learned uh, that we should have high input resistance for a voltmeter and uh, for that if we just increase the input resistance by adding series resistance then the problem is I mean we are increasing the resistance, but that will cause less current to flow through the meter. So, the deflection of the meter will be less and if we make small error in recording the pointer position the percentage error will be huge. So, it is a again chicken and egg problem we need high input impedance, but if we in, uh, increase input impedance then less current flows and we may make slight error in recording the pointer position which will uh, lead to large percentage error. So, therefore, we need what is called amplification. So, that even when small amount of current is flowing the pointer will deflect a lot ok. So, uh, the point is so we need amplification such that we get 
large deflection even when current is current is low through the meter. So, these are the two important things very important thing these are the two important requirements number one high input impedance and amplification which we cannot obtain with amplification which we cannot obtain with classical electromechanical instruments no amplification is possible there ok. So, these are complementary uh, not com contradicting uh, contradicting requirements which we cannot achieve with classical instruments therefore, we will need electronic instruments. Uh, so, we have seen one example uh, let us call this uh, example 1. Now, uh, we can talk about the same example, example 1 from a different perspective, from uh, the opposite perspective. Okay. So, now we will say that uh, suppose we have a circuit uh, where the voltage thevenin equivalent voltage uh, between a b is 1 volt and its uh, internal resistance is 1 kilo kilo ohm ok. So, this is a small voltage 1 volt 1 kilo ohm So, uh, in fact, we can uh, make it even smaller. Okay. Let us make it 0 0.1 volt. So, basically that means, now we are trying to measure a small voltage okay. and we will see what is the problem with electromechanical instruments when we are trying to measure small voltages. Okay. Now, once again, so we want to measure, we want to measure VAB which is supposed to be 0 0.1 volt and uh, we will use the same instrument as before. So, in our previous instrument uh, ok. So, we had an instrument whose full scale deflection current was 1 milli ampere. So, we will use the same instrument ok. So, uh, but we will tell it in a different way same story from a different angle different perspective. So, now we say that uh, we have a meter with FSD current equal to 1 milli ampere. So, that means, it requires 1 milli ampere current to see full scale deflection maximum deflection and we want to make a voltmeter out of this meter. Okay, which can measure this voltage which is around uh, 0.1 volt. Okay. So, uh, we have to make a voltmeter with above meter or above uh, spec, so that we can measure voltage around 0 0.1 volt. So, if we want to achieve this ok, what should be the internal impedance of the meter to achieve this what should be the internal impedance or resistance 
of the meter. So, this is the question. Okay. Same situation, almost same situation as before. Now, we are asking the question from the opposite perspective. Okay. So, this time we are saying that uh, we will have a meter whose full scale deflection current is this much. Now, tell me what should be the resistance of the meter so that we can measure this 1 volt. Now, the requirement is that to have full scale deflection, full scale FSD, full scale deflection when 0 0.1 volt is applied because this is the requirement. right? If we get less deflection than this, then as we just have told before, there is a chance of having more percentage error. If the deflection is small, you know, if the deflection is just say uh, one division in uh, in the meter, and we make say half division error in reading, then there is a huge relative error. But if the deflection is very high, uh, say the deflection is 10 division and if we make again half division error, then the error is only half out of 10 which is smaller. So, therefore, we always like to have as large large deflection as possible. Okay. So, therefore, uh, we want to have large deflection full scale deflection only with this much voltage. Okay. So, that means, with this voltage full scale deflection current that is 1 milli ampere must flow. Okay. So, 1 milli ampere should flow under this 0 0.1 volt voltage okay, which implies meter resistance should be this voltage by uh, 1 milli ampere. So, this is 0 0.1 kilo ohm means 100 kilo ohm. Right? This is what we will need. This is the answer. Okay? So, th th this was the question. What should be the value of the internal resistance? Suppose the internal resistance is more than this what will happen? Less current will flow. So, the deflection will be less and error in measurement will be percentage error, relative error will be more. So, we should not have more than this resistance if we want full scale uh, deflex, uh, full scale deflection. But less resistance is fine, then more current will flow, yeah, but the pointer may uh, go outside the range okay that's a situation you uh, forget okay uh, so that means we should not have so we should not have more resistance than approximately this hun oh this was not kilo ohm this was a uh, hundred ohm sorry a mistake. Okay. So, so, we should not have more than 100 ohm. Right? But now, you know uh, that the, the circuit, the internal resistance of the circuit is much higher than the voltmeter resistance. So, what will happen? When current starts to flow in the circuit, when we connect a voltmeter, so this resistance is only 100 ohm, this is 1 kilo ohm. So, when current flows, most of the voltage will drop here. So, therefore, the voltage across the meter will be only about uh, 10 percent of this. So, 90 percent almost 90 percent vol voltage will drop here. So, we will have a huge error, we will get a reading which is around. Uh, so, this is like 1 over uh, 11 or 1 over 10 approximately. So, we will have a reading which is only 10 percent of the two true value. So, huge error, we cannot afford that. Okay. So, you see these are complementary right? to measure 
So, let me write this point to highlight okay, uh, with a different color. To measure low voltage, we need uh, low internal, no internal resistance according to ex, uh, this second example, this example as you have seen to avoid large relative error, but you see uh, if internal resistance of the circuit, resist, this means the Thevenin resistance of the circuit. Which circuit? The circuit where we are measuring the voltage is high. If this is high, then we need high internal resistance, as we have seen in the previous example, previous to previous. Okay. So, these are complementary. So, therefore, we cannot uh, successfully measure with low error uh, voltage where the voltage itself is small and the uh, Thevenin resistance of the circuit is high. Okay. So, we cannot measure those things with classical electromechanical instruments. Let us take another example. Okay. So, more examples we take I think the idea will be more and more clear to you, but if you have already understood this you may just skip this part. So, this time example 2 we will take an ammeter or a current measuring scenario. Okay. So, suppose uh, that uh, we have a circuit like this uh, say this is 1 volt, uh, this is 1 kilo ohm and this is a closed circuit. So, this current will be how much? This will be this is 1 volt, okay. uh, this current will be 1 milli ampere. So, if this is around 1 volt, this is around 1 kilo ohm. So, this current will be uh, 1 milli ampere, but we want to measure it using a ammeter. We want to measure uh, this current I, how much is I. So, what will we do? So, we will insert an ammeter in this circuit to measure this current. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let me just change the numbers a bit. Let me take this. Uh, 1 ohm. Okay. I am just changing the example, okay. a different situation. Uh, so, this is 1 ohm, this is 1 volt, so this is 1 ampere and we want to measure this current. So, we insert a, a, an ammeter, but uh, the ammeter resistance, internal resistance of ammeter call it R m. R m is also say 1 ohm. We know for an uh, ammeter the internal resistance is smaller. So, we are taking a small number 1 ohm, 1 ohm is a small, small number, okay. but in this case in this circuit this resistance itself is also small. right? So, therefore, what will happen measured current will be equal to how much? So, when we insert this ammeter the measured current will be 1 volt divided by this plus this. So, 1 volt divided by 1 ohm plus 1 ohm 2 ohm. So, this will be half ohm you see error is 50 percent. This was the true current this is the measured current okay. and why do we have this error? 
we have this error because this resistance the internal resistance of the circuit of this part itself is small and comparable to the ammeter resistance therefore we have a problem right so you know so we uh, need to have very uh, small ammeter resistance but also uh, there is a requirement the re there is another requirement uh, ok to understand that let me uh, please allow me to change all these numbers once again ok uh, to make it more interesting let me make it 1 millivolt let me make it 1 uh, uh, or not so much let me make it 100 millivolt ok let us continue with uh, the previous number only we can uh, so this is 1 volt ok uh, ok we will just continue with this number ok so uh, this is 1 volt so the original current was 1 ampere right so we are trying to measure a current which is around 1 ampere so this also put another requirement that the meter that we will insert should give full scale deflection at 1 ampere. Another requirement on the meter is that the meter should give a uh, full scale deflection at 1 ampere only right and uh, so this is the original current that we want to measure this could have been even uh, smaller ok uh, I mean if I if I just simply make uh, say this is 1 millivolt right then this is 1 if this is 1 ohm then this current is 1 milliampere ok then the requirement for us is to measure this 1 milliampere current and uh, in this case oh sorry uh, this was not ohm this was uh, so this will be uh, this is 1 millivolt this will be half milliampere error will remain same as it is ok so but now the requirement is we have to measure 1 milliampere so with 1 milliampere I should get full deflection ok so that means the meter should be very sensitive when measuring when measuring low currents So, these are the two requirements right. So, you are measuring a low current. So, it should be sensitive to low current and uh, the internal resistance should also be small and these two are contradictory. Do you know why? Because, uh, so let me first write this is 1, this is 2 requirement 1 and 2 are contradictory are difficult to achieve together why see uh, we need a high sensitivity so just consider a pmmc meter and for a pmmc meter how much is the deflection so for pmmc meter you, we know that uh, the deflection is proportional to you know uh, it is proportional to the flux density B area of the coil number of turns in the coil what else 
BA and the current. Now, we know this current is small, but we want large deflection. Okay? So, this is sensitivity. This is the sensitivity, it is proportional to this and we want high deflection at small current that means high sensitivity. How can we have high sensitivity? Can we incre increase B a lot practically? If we are using a permanent magnet, you can never uh, possibly get something like uh, 100 Tesla uh, flux density. No, it is not available. Okay. So, this there is a limit on B practically, um, permanent magnets, natural magnets cannot have indefinitely large uh, flux density. Area, area of the coil, can you make a meter which is I mean, normal meters that you have seen in lab are of this size. Now, if you want to make the sensitivity 10 times, can you make a meter which is 10 times larger? No, I mean that is impractical. In, possibly you can change in number of turns, you have to increase number of turns. And if you want to increase number of turns, what will happen? You will also increase the resistance of the coil, because the coil is getting longer and longer, I mean the length of the wire is getting longer as you increase the number of turn. And you cannot make it simultaneously thick, then the meter will be heavy, big, uh, costly, uh, all those things. So, there is a limit on the electromechanical instruments, uh, so that you cannot achieve simultaneously high sensitivity with low uh, resistance of the meter there is a limit how much you can achieve. But what if we need more than that? Then electronic instruments are useful. So, let me just summarize. Uh, so, what I have just said uh, to have let me just write to have more sensitivity we need n uh, to be large since b and a cannot be increased much and this implies so n large n implies large resistance So, there is a limit, there is a limit on how much sensitivity we can achieve with the without increasing resistance much. Uh, in case of classical electromechanical instruments like PMMC, etcetera. Okay. So, this is the reason why we need electronic instruments. By the way, one uh, small uh, uh, point, one small uh, mistake that often uh, we have seen uh, people to make. So, we have said the two requirements, okay, uh, two re uh, requirements for uh, uh, electronic instruments is that high input impedance and amplification. Now, this high input impedance is true for voltmeters. Okay. So, when talking about voltmeters, do not say ever by mistake that we need high input impedance or internal impedance for an ammeter. For an ammeter, we need low internal resistance, okay. it is opposite. So, let me uh, rather write. So, requirements that we have to fulfill with electronic instruments, number one high sensitivity. 
or amplification. So, if I am trying to measure a small voltage, I have to somehow first make it larger, bigger, then measure or if I am trying to measure a small current, somehow I have to amplify its effect, the effect of small current I have to amplify. So, this is the requirement amplification and secondly high uh, resistance, high internal resistance or input resistance for voltmeter and low internal resistance for ammeters. If I make a, a an ammeter with electronic circuits that should have low resistance, if I make a voltmeter with electronic circuits that should have high internal resistance. So, these are the two requirements you must uh, bear in mind before we proceed further. Thank you.